What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash I do work here lady. All right, this story's called, I work here? I'm not a student, first story. So when I was like 17, 18, I worked casual contract at a university. Kind of like a temp, but contracted at the university, not at an agency. Most of the times I worked there, my age didn't cause too much of an issue cause it was usually during holidays or breaks, but it did still happen a few times. One of my times there was during the enrollment period at the beginning of the term or semester, and I was tasked with accepting ID card pictures and printing all the cards. I would do them in batches of around 50, then take them through to the student hub, where students were actively enrolling and collecting their cards and putting them in alphabetical order with the rest. The students enrolling were being crowd controlled by older students. I had been doing this for a few days and it was mid-afternoon when I took another batch through only to be stopped by a fourth year student insisting that I take a ticket and stand at the side. At first I thought she was speaking to someone else and went to continue. But was quickly stopped by her arm coming out in front of me and her repeating herself. Oh, uh, I'm not enrolling. You need to take a ticket and wait to the side. I'm working. I'm dropping off the ID cards. Yeah, if you need an ID card, you need to take a ticket. Again, I'm working here. I have 50 cards that need to be put with the rest. Just before she went to speak again, and I could tell by her look that she obviously still wasn't getting it, and was assuming, despite the 50 ID cards, that I was a student. One of the actual staff members spotted me and can tell there was an issue and saved me by shouting over help me is that the next batch does it have student name in there all right let's go on to the second one all right this one's called i work here i'm not a student second story same introduction so i was like 17 18 worked at a casual contract at a university kind of like a temp a contract at a university not an agency most of the times i worked there my age didn't cause much okay i'm gonna skip this thing oh wait no because it was usually during holidays or breaks but it still did happen a few times okay so i had worked there quite a few times usually in blocks of about three weeks i'd usually be brought in to do one or two mega tasks and then stop working when they had been finished and every Everyone in the office I worked in knew me, but then offices merged and more people were crammed in the space, specifically in front of the door from our office to the rest of the uni building. So I'm just going about my business, been there for about three days this time, doing whatever weird random task I had been given. I think I had maybe gone outside to smoke or get food on my lunch break and I was heading back in, but as soon as I opened the door, I was stopped by one of the staff members who had just moved offices. Loud, obnoxious woman. Can I? help you confused and not realizing what's going on no i'm fine thanks and try to walk again this is a staff only office as it says on the door realizing but words failing me oh i uh no you need to go to that reception desk at the front no i actually students aren't allowed back here i'm working sorry i work here i'm not a student i'm at that desk over there i point oh and she turns back to her desk no apologies no nothing justin oh and then ignored <laughs> damn that's brutal cool beans though that you had that thing that that whole temp thing like a uh, fire guy all right this story's called my first time being mistaken for a student as a ta i've always looked younger than my age i'm used to being mistaken for a preteen or a teenager even though i am in my early 20s i knew this would be an issue when i decided to get a job as a teacher's assistant at a local elementary school during the first week of school that the students were coming back i was on morning duty letting the kids out of cars helping make sure the cars are moving forward all that jazz one of the preschoolers i let out of the car had so much stuff shoved in her backpack she couldn't put it on her own back and their guardian had already driven away. My principal just told me to walk her down to her pre-k class and explain the situation to her teacher. No big deal I assume. I walk this little girl to class with her backpack in hand and give it to the teacher who we are going to call Miss Silk. I explained that I was told to walk the little girl back down. She looks me up and down with a very judgmental look. From now on she can walk herself down to class. 
class. That's all she told me before she walked back into her classroom. I just kind of shrugged and went back to work. I had never met Miss Silk before, but my mother used to be a teacher and was even once a co-worker of Miss Silk. And my mom didn't have very nice things to say about her, but that's not really uncommon for my mother. I still couldn't figure out at first why she was so mad at me for literally doing what I was told until a few hours later it hit my dumb ass that maybe she thought I was a student walking her little sister to class. I often see older siblings watch their little siblings go down their respective hallway to class, but it must not be allowed to walk your sibling all the way down to class. But even coming to this revelation had me even more confused because one, I work at a uniform school and I was literally wearing black slacks, a blue blouse, and a lanyard with a school district employee name tag on it, and two, we looked nothing alike. In fact, I am very white and she was a little Hispanic girl. We could have been step siblings or something, but that wouldn't be my first thought in this situation. I wouldn't find out for sure what her issue was until a few days where again this little girl had a backpack too big for her, so I had to walk her down. So we walk down, she looks me up and down again with a glare that would have made actual elementary school me cry. What grade are you in? There it is. I was right. Not that I was very happy about it. I work here. She looks at me, not really believing me. I'm my mom's youngest daughter. Luckily for me, I am like a little clone of my mother, so once she got a closer look at me, and it was like a switch had been pulled. She went from judgy to smiley. Oh, OP, I thought you were still in high school. How's your family doing? And we just chatted for a little bit before I went back to work. I actually have gone in to help her class before, and she swears I'm a better teacher than her. I once heard her tell a four-year-old to shut up, so <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. What still bothers me to this day, however, is that she only deemed me worthy of respect when she realized I was a co-worker, and not when she thought I was some punk sixth grader. See, I don't understand, man. If you hate kids so much, then why are you a teacher? Unless you're, like, sadistic. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> All right, this story's called, If you apply for a job, don't be aggressive to unknown numbers that call. Fairly new to Reddit, so... So this happened a few weeks ago, and my mind just processed it, processed it, as I and do... Ah, oh my god, that was a really weird sentence. Just processed it as an I do work your moment. So I work at a chain of large-scale chain restaurant we will refer to as TR, the restaurant I'm bad at naming, as a general worker. We all do all of the work at some point or another, and we are cross-trained. I've worked here for two months by this time, and already have the respect of all the staff, including the regional manager. One day, we get a phone call, and as everyone else was busy, I pick up. There's the cat, that's me, and an applicant to our store. Rude boyfriend. Assistant manager. The restaurant, okay. The exchange is as follows. The restaurant, not a real street. Who the hell is this? In the same cheerful tone. The restaurant not a real street. I asked you a question. Who the heck is this and why are you calling my girlfriend? Side note, I just answered an incoming call and we usually only call once because it's a chain fast food place and usually if they don't answer, they will call back or they don't want it anymore. The restaurant on not a real street and no, this is not the restaurant. As I've been trying to say, you have dialed the number for the restaurant. And the only reason we send outgoing calls to private numbers is to schedule interviews. In the background, you hear Anne. Oh, I did apply there. Oh, sorry, I'll hand you over to her now. He does so before I can speak. I'm only a worker and can't schedule the interview. I'll tell my manager you called when she gets back. Uh, can I get your name to pass it on? Anne gives me her name and I make a note. The assistant store manager was at another store grabbing some items that were understocked and I didn't see her long enough when she came back to tell her before she closed locked out, but I brought it up the next day. By the way, uh, Anne called regarding her application. Oh, yeah, I was gonna set up an interview with her. Or rather, her rude boyfriend called, asking why we called her, cussed me out for a bit before handing the phone over when he figured it out. Thanks for letting me know. She will not be getting an interview because that sounds like she's just gonna be more drama than it's even worth if she does get hired. I kind of feel bad because her boyfriend cost her the job, but if you get unknown callers while you have job applications, applications out, answer politely. The pay isn't the best, but a lot of people like working here because the managers are really flexible with the schedule. I have one coworker who only works when she's on break from college, and she always comes back and feels welcome. A lot of the workers hold two jobs, including assistant manager. Some can only come in two days a week. 
The store manager is great about work with it. I was behind on bills and needed more hours. The boss hooks me up. Everyone is friendly. We do not need somebody starting excessive drama at the job. <laughs> I don't know how many things that like I sh how many calls I didn't answer that I probably should have just because it was an unknown number because I get so many spam calls like it's ridiculous and every time I answer it's always some bull crap and um like I just ignore <laughs> numbers I don't know which is bad I know I'm not not very good at doing the adult thing but in my defense I got nothing all right, this story's called Excuses, Excuses. I'm a hairstylist, and I work with the public a lot. There are definitely some nice people out there, but there are definitely some rude people out there for sure. The other day, our books were getting filled pretty quickly. Since Brovid, we no longer do walk-ins. We are a reservation-only salon right now. This older man comes in, boomer generation, and I welcome him, then ask if he had a reservation. He says no, so I let him know that I have some availability within the next 30 minutes, and can put him down at 11.15. He throws up his arms, huffs, says no, and proceeds to walk out. Then he turns around, throws his arms up again, and says, There's no one in here, and I have a quick haircut. Firstly, so many people say that their haircut is quick, when in fact, it usually is not. And secondly, I had people coming in, and I let him know that I had someone coming in in literally just a couple of minutes, and then two more people coming in in 15 minutes, and that if he'd be willing to wait, I could get him in at 11.15, like I had said before. He then said that he is willing to wait but there's no one in here and he wants his haircut now that it doesn't take very long so again i tell him that i have someone already coming in in just a few minutes and that in the future he could call us that way we could get him on our books i don't have the phone number has anyone heard of google before anyway i give him a card with the phone number and say that we will see him soon he starts to say every time i come in here there's always someone new it's ridiculous sir i've worked here for over three three years and everyone that has been here has been here for at least a year if not more <laughs> that's comical no you haven't you have not worked here that long you weren't here when i got my haircut last and i never seen you before you probably came in on a day that i wasn't working or i was at another store oh please just stop with the excuses it's always excuses with you guys he continued to mumble some more stuff as he was walking out, but I didn't care to hear. I responded by saying to him, Not excuses, sir. If you want to be rude, though, you definitely do not have to come back. Thankfully, he did not come back, and we didn't have to deal with him, but oh my goodness, people are so rude and entitled. It just makes me so frustrated sometimes. Clearly, this man has never heard of days off from work or thinks that I just work every single day and every single minute that we're open because my... My goodness! Yeah, that guy sounds like a chumperoni and cheese. But then again, um, I'm not saying he was in the right, but his haircut probably would have been quick because old guys, they typically don't have pretty crazy haircuts. There's like four different hairstyles for old men that still have hair. All right, this story's called Not a Student. A million years ago, while in high school, I had a civics teacher. See, it was a long time ago. He was fairly short and small of stature. Good teacher, though. During graduation, he was standing next to the bleachers trying to keep us reprobates in line. Someone, parents, school board member, came up behind him and started berating him for not wearing a robe and being out of his seat. He stood there for a moment in shock as she went on, finally had enough and turned around to face her. He pulled his tie out and waved it in her face. I'm a teacher, not a student. Go sit down yourself. She turned a bit red in the face and started in on him again. One of the kids next to him said, Mr. Smith, do you want me to go get the principal? He just stared at her and shook his head. At that point, she actually looked at him and realized he probably was a teacher. She just turned around and stalked off. He snorted a few times and looked at us. Later, he told us it happened a lot. That's why y'all always wore a tie. I can still see him flapping his tie at her. <laughs> That's a funny story. <laughs> I can imagine uh, my world history teacher in, um, in uh, what's, his, what's it called? High school. That was bad. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Mr. Goff. I just imagined him. He didn't look like a kid, but like I can just, he was, he was a funny dude. He was like constantly kind of just done with people's stuff, but he was a fun teacher. Kind of like that. 
All right, this story's called Women Aren't in the Military. When I was in the Navy, just got out a few days ago, and dating someone who was also in, he would often get into conversations with random people and they would like to talk to him about it, but he never would mention that I was also in, so the people just assumed I was a dependent. It wouldn't be until I mentioned I was in too that the people would have any interest in talking to me or hearing what I had to say. I'll never understand why he would never mention my service too, especially since I had been in longer and made more than him. But I guess in hindsight, he just liked the attention for himself. Edit. Anyway, we're not together anymore. This was a past relationship. Well, you know what? It must have felt pretty good to have the attention on you afterward because it's like, hey, you know what? I'm valid too. And you are. <laughs> Apparently more so than him, jerk. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.